Hello and welcome back. So we are trying to escape the village before the wolves get us. Whoa. That's <laughs> I didn't realize I ended on that line. Okay. As it turned out, that's exactly where the other inhabitants were? With the exception of one, anyway. I, I kind of thought maybe that line just sounded ominous. I thought maybe we were just going to find a bunch of dead bodies. You're late. Or maybe we're early. Haru is in her usual agitated state. Okay, so Mako is there. So yeah, it's probably going to be the the Papa's guy that's dead. Tay was silently chanting something to herself. Yasu would be insane as a victim. Like, if he somehow wasn't a wolf, there's no way. It would be so stupid to kill him. Mako. Haru had her hands on her shoulders, but she looked anxious. And finally... Oh, hi -yo. Of course. The freaking wolf! Been on you from the beginning, buddy. Yasu, his face is grim. Evil bastard. Those were all the people here, meaning that... Yeah. A simple process of elimination was enough to know who was gone. Anyway, it's time for the first battle. First battle? What have we been doing all this time? But Haru stopped her. It was time. I raised my stick. What? And... Oh, fuck you, dude. God! Psycho murderous bastard. Yes, he stood in my way. What? Mm. He had a menacing looking grass sickle in his hand. He readied it for a swing at me. Oh, screw you! Ah, I hate this guy so much! I think it's because he's just forced into it, but it's like... God! It just feels like, you know, like he's just plotting everyone's death, and then he's like, blaming everyone else around him for all of it. True. The first true thing you maybe said all game long. True. No, that's not the reason. The reason is you need to be in that meeting to out your insanity. Yes, I will. In your victory. They didn't say another word. Chiemi and Mako were the only ones who seemed confused at all. Yeah, the two wolves have the girl. Basically, the others had prepared for this. Well, maybe not two wolves. ま、まず昨日僕は名古に対してこの集落村からの脱走は禁忌。それは知ってる。問題は村からの脱走をミスミス見逃す側。だから早朝に名古のもう一つ昨日 千恵美と安永君は対立関係になった。基本的にはハルちゃんの票をほぼ確定票で抑えている。安永君が有利だろう。しかし、タエさんとメイコという不動だから千恵美と和解して唯一の部外者である僕を狙うのが違う。違わない
君の言動のおかしなところ確かに全ての悪事を僕のせいにするしかし一方で君は自分のキャラを大事にしなさすぎだ勝手な分析まあそれは10年だか何年だかもちろん君だってじゃあ君が完全に理性を失って僕というよそ者に怒りを向けているのか Well yesterday you were saying everything would be great if、uh, the guy that the wolves killed last night died <laughs> Now it's everything would be great if I died あるいはとても冷静に僕をくくって昨日の歌を空振りさせじつまり昼のどっちだと思う And yesterday's and the day before and the day before I mean, you've been the leader. He has been the leader of the feast every single day, and they have not done anything right the entire time. She gasped and looked at Yasu. There was suspicion in her eyes, not trust. How? Yeah, he's, he's never been interested in finding a wolf. That's not what he's doing. He's voting out. He even admitted it last time. He's voting out who he doesn't like. But he hasn't used logic. <laughs> well, not good logic. He had a point there. I didn't feel like shit about that. I should have joined the feast from the get go 100%. If I had, I wouldn't have wasted time on pointless arguments and autopsies, yeah. However, uh -huh. Once I said that, Yasu hung his head and fell silent. Ten seconds of silence were enough for everyone to realize he'd lost the argument. However, the expression on his face, is he just going to come right out as a wolf? It was abnormally calm. One, I freaking knew it. Two, did they already have the numbers or something? I don't know how the. I, I don't know the rules. He spoke as if it wasn't a big deal. God, I had that guy pegged in meeting one. <laughs> wow. He spoke as if it wasn't a big deal. But that just made it even more abnormal. He tossed away the grass sickle. I am hoping that next time it like randomly does the rolls differently. I don't know how that would work, but that would be cool. It doesn't seem like that works with time travel though. It seems like the rolls are always going to stay the same. So it's like how how does the mystery continue? I don't I don't get it. It's kind of weird. Or maybe we go back in time and do it right, and then there's another game. I don't know. His voice wasn't nearly as passionate as before. It was cold and rational. He demonstrated a confidence rooted in sound logic. But I couldn't understand what he meant. I think it's the grandma. Otherwise, the other two options are Haru or Chiemi. What was the point of that? Yeah, it's the freaking grandma! So I was right last time on the two. Ah! I knew it last time, okay. I really. So I knew it from the beginning of the, the previous video because, like, I kind of went back and watched the other one that I had filmed before that, and it was just really obvious that the grandma was just going along with everything and not being helpful at all. Like, Haru was just too obvious. Tay was the one that was just going along, you know? I could. <laughs> Had he decided to graciously concede by selling out his partner? No. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, he said he'd already won. Even if there were two wolves or four of us, they lost, they'd lose votes. My answer came from a completely unexpected direction. Well, it seems like killing is allowed, so they're just, maybe they're just gonna stab, stab, and then they win. <laughs> Why does she seem happy? A shot up here. What? So, uh, this is a thing I've, I've thought about 
quite a bit. I don't think it's the case, though. This is going back to that secret meeting. So, so the other thing I was thinking about, I'll just say that just because I started to talk about that, but sometimes in, in werewolf games there is like a role of like a sorcerer to where that person's also on the wolf's side and trying to help them win. But I think if that was the case, we'd know about it. So... I think this is going back to their little meeting and they acted like, oh, you interrupted something here? Like he, I think maybe he said, we're a wolf and we're gonna keep you alive. We're gonna protect you or something, maybe. Haru became the least comprehensible of anyone present. Great. <laughs> she ran to Yasu and hugged him. He hesitated for a moment, but reciprocated. Mako, still as clueless as ever, slowly walked over to us. Yeah, it's bad. We're all gonna die, Mako. I really didn't, but so for some reason, Haru's still on their side. I'm thinking right now it's mainly because of how she feels about him and something he said to her, but I had a feeling something wasn't quite right for a while now, and I suspected it'd be made more clear now. I was certain of it, and it made me feel uneasy. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah, he's been doing everything. So she wasn't even denying it. I don't have a vote, right? So yeah. So if Haru's voting, they win. The truth. Tay told us a story that was very similar to the legend they told in this strange village. Well, it was less like it was similar, and more like I was looking at it from the opposite angle. The part about Great Lord Sinai sending the five guardians to help people was the same. Four of them teamed up with the humans to murder the wolves. However, in the real story, the good and bad sides were completely reversed. Apparently, the people and the four guardians joined Yami on the first Feast of Yami Purge. Basically, all of them were Yami Bito. They all ganged up on, overpowered, and expulsed the wolves who tried to resist until the very end? The wolves are the good people? That meant this land had belonged to the Yami Bito for a long, long time. The wolves were summoned here by none other than Shanai himself. Some people of Yasu were given the blessing of the wolves and had to free Yasumizu of its Yamabito. Basically, it was a holy war for them. And that was the truth behind the Feast of the Yami Purge. Take a continued her explanation. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Explain more, please. Tay was crying. All right. So she was now a confirmed culprit who believed the murders to be salvation. There were just two more points I didn't understand. There's so many. What? <laughs> The corruption, yes. And the eerie message, what? Most things made sense if you switched the enemies and allies. What What things? Explain more, I don't get it. The idea that people were wearing those outfits could be the good guys was kind of weird, but while well, that was the culture here. Or maybe the Yamabito saw them as evil. Maybe that was the story here. The problem here was that, I mean, all you're saying is that every each side thinks it's of themselves as good? Like, that's not a surprise. That's normal. The problem here was that Shami didn't know this. West. Wow. So even Yasu didn't know about it. I remember some of his words. 
自分たちのしていることが正しいと思えればいいんじゃないか。Zealous murderers of people. Whatever, enough about, enough about Yasunaga. Naze, Haruchan was dead. She already knew the real story. Why? Who told her? Okami Samaba. But Ojichan was seen the Hini. What does she know you mean? He did it. Nonsense. Sanity. Did she seriously decide to throw her life away over a dream? This is so weird. Like. I mean, she's still on the other side, right? So it's like just thinking that the wolves are good guys doesn't change anything. <laughs> that means everyone else gets murdered. Like, I, I don't get it. I, maybe it's the religion, I guess? But. On the day Oji-san died, he died the night before Haru tried to run away from the settlement. She believed the dream. She started to despair over being surrounded by Yamabito and planned to escape. That made sense. It all clicked. She believed. She believed the sudden revelation, despite a lack of proof, and that the man she liked was in the minority that had justice on their side. Okay, so the only way I can really make sense of this is that. This is going along with their religion, and she's saying, Oh, you're good, so therefore I'll sacrifice myself because our religion wins, or something. But. Okay. And right now, she said she would betray the humans and join the wolves. She believed they were right with all of her heart. And so, the wolf, Yasu, had three votes for the feast. <laughs> ルールを曲げてフサイスさんを宴に呼んでも三票だ。決戦と隠して楽勝でしたね。I saw clearly now. I understood. ハルアキさん、それそうだね。チエミたちのいや。Well, you could still try to convince Haru here. 負けだ。I mean, maybe it's undoable, but it's your and that's your play. I mean. Assuming I'm right that Haru's gonna die too. I mean, you have a way to convince her. Everyone had different reactions to my words. Chambi backed away and gasped. Tay closed her eyes and sighed. Miko didn't seem to understand. Yasu didn't react at all. Haru was smiling creepy. Oh man. All I really had left was struggling like the filthy, annoying adult I was. Haru-chan. What? Oh, Ni-chan. このこのまま何も関わらないのそう Was that relief just now? Wait, what about Rokaku? Wait, what? So if we go get Rokaku and she's okay and she can vote well then we still need to get my vote in there too but maybe Naki ni se de mo いいのかね Oh, she's trying to save me? I keep forgetting that word, that person. Okay. That dispassionate tone didn't seem to do much to convince me that he truly believed in this ridiculous superstition. Sure, want to freaking talk. Tokai Jin no Gori say to them, and he's faking too. I, I, this guy's so evil, man. I just, I want to die. I, I know which side I'm on. It's not yours. Good point. Well, yeah, I was pretty damn cold blooded. I don't think he means it. I think he's lying. Exactly. This is pretty damn bad, honestly. Apparently, the Great Lord was a huge scumbag. You should have told him that much. That's what I'm saying. I don't really understand. I mean, unless it's her religion. 
人きりの時の話で安永君がミスでそんなことをするとは思えないかそれで自分の正体を確定させないままに誘導して狼はそういう役回りの人がいることを知っていたということじゃないのかな Oh, it's the role to get the vision? So it's kind of like a sorcerer. He actually said that? This is the part where he's supposed to be lying. By not denying it, you basically admitted you were an absolute scumbag. Yes, it's been obvious. <laughs> He used Haru, knowing you'd have to kill her. Was he that bad at lying? Then how did he survive so long? Wait, something was very wrong. I seriously misunderstood something here. I think she's okay with dying, is the thing. And soon enough, my hunch was proven right. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Harishan. Harishan's voice is brimming with joy. A carefree smile. Laced with seductive intoxication. So, I mean, I guess if they're true believers in this religion, right? There's probably some kind of afterlife they believe in, and who cares as long as you're on the right side of your religion, so. よみびとは汚れただからにお母さん幸せにするためにああその通りにいちゃん春の <laughs> Wow, this is creepy. <laughs> Haru coquettishly leaned down on me. Yes, you brought her closer without even a flicker of emotion crossing his face. Tay watched him with a broad smile. What the fuck? <laughs> That's what I said. What are these people? I underestimated it. I underestimated the mad madness of Yasumizu. Yeah, it's their religion. And I realized too late, the feast was not, wasn't just a system where zealous murderers killed each other. There was something here that completely shattered the people on a fundamental level. It was like a gear of madness. Those who knew the real story found salvation in death. That insane tale instantly convinced people that it was right to agree and to find peace in that. And I was actually surrounded by those very people. Understanding that made me remember that she was from here too. Shamu is trying to stick, take a step forward. Should have realized this earlier. She who was afraid of God was just like them who accepted their salvation. Both brands of madness probably had roots in the exact same thing, so she was just as susceptible to madness as they were. However, it wasn't too late for her. Yasu's expression stayed the same, but right before I looked away from him, I saw a slight change. It was bitterness. Irritation. Something out of place on the victor's face. That made me realize that his plan for this scene wasn't lost to madness. Then I had no choice but to take advantage of this opportunity. I grabbed Chambi's hand. I pulled it with so much force that she fell onto her backside, but I didn't care. I dashed past her and swung my weapon at Yasu. Yeah! Murder is allowed, so if you can kill him, you have the numbers again if Chambi votes okay. Right? Haru. You swing your weapon at Yasu and hit Haru? Okay. Tay twice. And Yasu five or six times, then I ran to Chambi and Mako, who were completely dumbfounded and fled the hall. There was no time to waste. I had to hurry up and escape. If I didn't, I'd waste the one chance he'd given me. I was probably irritated not just because of hunger. It was because of the epiphany I had. And because it took me so long to reach it. Yasu had a different motive. Were you going to churn her into a wolf? しかし what? 
you're saying that Yasu was trying to sacrifice everyone to save Chiemi? I that doesn't fit with everything else. He didn't attempt to let me run away, he wouldn't have thrown away the sickle. He was basically signaling for me to understand and finally attack him. In the end, he was far more clever than me. I never stopped dancing to his tune. Regardless of, though, exactly because of that, I had to help these two escape no matter what. By the way, using an adult without relying on oneself was a very adult thing to do. Yasu. Good luck with the rest. We crossed the field paths, went to the stone graves, and over the boundary. Descending on the cliff took a lot of patience. It didn't seem like they were chasing us, so we got on carefully. Chami's expression was dead. She'd been hit by the sudden revelation. The game board had been flipped on her, she'd lost, and now she had suddenly had to say goodbye to her old friends. It's hard to just laugh that off, but what about the whole religion stuff? She may... If she buys into that, this doesn't matter. Should I have told her about Yasu's intentions? I did consider it, but I didn't bring myself to. He chose to save her by sacrificing their relationship. And she knew she'd probably want to go back to the settlement. Or maybe I just didn't want to say it because my own pride as a man. That was fine by me too. Being able to shrug off such unfairness was one of the blessings of adulthood. So I counseled Chiemi, shouted to Miko to be more careful, and generally talked as much as I could. The mist grew even denser. Nah. I couldn't see anything, I lost my bearings, it was worse than that, I couldn't even see Chiemi's or Miko's faces, and I was actually holding their hands. We were already at the bottom of the cliff, we're walking in the stones below, we heard water, so it was cl clear that we were close to the river. But I didn't know if we could keep going. I thought she was going to freak out, but... They were acting strange. The wolves are coming? <laughs> I strained my ears again! Was it above us? I could hear the sound of rustling leaves from the top of the cliff. What if the sound was just the wind though? Was she jumping in shadows? No. Yep. This was their headquarters. Wait, they're the good guys, right? Doesn't matter. Still, this wasn't a normal place. I had to get out of here ASAP. Everything's about perspective. I mean, you got a war, each side thinks they're good. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't change anything. After a while, I was forced to recognize the anomaly. We couldn't reach the river. I ran alongside the, the riverbed. It should have been small, just a few meters wide. But even after 10 meters of running, or 10 minutes of running, <laughs> There was no sight of the river. We couldn't get anywhere, it's just like... Ring wandering? Okay. A phenomenon where people wandering snowy peaks lose their sense of direction and just wander, keep wandering in circles. However, even if my sight was limited, how can anyone get lost in such a small riverbed? I could hear the stream right next to me, this felt so wrong. I was as good as blind, I like to trust my ears, but that made me realize how useless that was to rely on. I trust my sense of direction less with each ep with every passing second. So I'm getting closer. Didn't see anything. We're hungry. <laughs> Something's getting closer. She called my name through the mist. I tried to sound lighthearted, but I wasn't confident I had pulled it off. Huh. So this is the magic of the village? We can't escape because we're from... Uh, she can't escape, so therefore it's not letting us escape. That makes sense. That was like... Oh my god, this whole food thing again. What does that mean? 
I thought that was blood for a second. What the hell is this? Oh! Is her face rotting or something? Why is that so dark and like... It looks like burnt. I turned around and pulled her by the arm. I looked at her face... Oh my god. From point blank rage, it was covered in brown and yellow blisters. Before I could even be surprised or disgusted, I kissed her. The sugary taste of blood. Ugh! Sugary taste of blood, pus, and rust filled my mouth and spread through my throat. I didn't care. Then to discard all unnecessary emotions, I hugged her as hard as I could. My breathing and thoughts ceased. This is sad. I kept it up until the pain began to fade. Then disappeared completely. She's like melting, it seems like. Eventually our lips are separated again. She prioritized words over breaths. And so I hugged her tight. I couldn't lose something so ridiculous. Lose to something. She weakly hugged me back, but couldn't keep it up for long. The presence in the distance was definitely closing in. I still don't get... I don't know. Like, Yasu was supposedly letting us run away for what? If, if this would happen. Did he not know? I, I don't know. We walked. It felt like I've been walking for several hours now. I think maybe he misconstrued Yasu's intentions. Maybe he's just trying to give her a chance to survive. Like, you know? But not, like, expecting her to get away. It's just like he didn't want to kill her, and so he's hesitating. I think that makes it better. It makes more sense. Like, he's just hesitating. He doesn't really want to kill her. He's not upset that we ran away. I think that makes a lot more sense. Then, like, he planned it like she gets away now. Our pursuers were close, but I had no intention of rushing. Chemi was slowly but surely getting weaker by the second. Her speed slackened with each step, and the weight on my arms became heavier. I could hear her cough and vomit something out. She apologized. Ugh. God, this is sad. Ugh. She apologized every time she did. And I basically replied with, it's alright, using different words every time. We walked. Jimmy's feet began to make wet sounds with every step. Ugh. We walked. Maybe we'd only been here for, for a few minutes. We walked. She kept apologizing. Maybe we haven't even moved a single meter. We walked. Maybe none of this was real. Then... Maybe nothing that happened here would be weird. Eventually, Chiami called out to me with a hoarse voice. Oh my god. The fact that she said something different had sparked a moment of baseless hope. And so... Oh my god. I, I have this... This image is making me think like her arm just fell off. And then that would be us taking a part of her away like she suggested earlier. Oh god. Gratitude was followed by another wet sound. With those final words, her weight vanished. It was strange. After all, I was still holding her hand. Oh, that's what I thought. With a splash of bodily fluid spread around while her limbs and entrails just collapsed. Jamie was gone, leaving behind only her rotting hand. Perhaps her remains were piling up in the mist ahead. I had a strange certainty that I couldn't touch it ever again. Was this what they call Yamabito? I couldn't accept this no matter what. <sighs> I put the hand in my jacket pocket. I took Mako, still sleeping, and shifted my grip to make carrying her easier. I continued walking for too long. Mako woke up. She was shocked that Shami was gone and cried for a bit, but then she said she wanted to walk by herself, so I put her down. The very next moment, she was dragged into the mist? It was clearly a malicious force that did that. To me, it looked like a furry arm. A scream resounded. It was an inhuman, animalistic scream. 
After hesitating for a moment, I turned to run. I caught a glimpse of something beastly within the mist. Mako had disappeared into the wolf. That's gotta be the wolf. I ran. And ran. Suddenly, I felt myself step into something wet. I had arrived at the river. It was meaningless. I lost everything. In the end, only I survived. Was there any meaning in fulfilling their promise? No. The meaning was for me to find. That was why I had to survive and find a forest. Yeah. I still had hope back then. They finally broke through the mist and showed themselves. Yeah, I figured. It would be weird for us to survive. Because we know we're going to go back in time. It makes more sense for us to die. And not that... <laughs> I mean, I would 100% choose to go back in time even if we were alive, but it's like, I'm not sure how that if that works like that. If we have the ability to go back in time if we don't die. They finally broke through the mist and showed themselves. Oh, of course. Why is it three? This is really hell, wasn't it? This wasn't the human realm or Nirvana. It was a river of hell. So, of course, both sides were going to be hell. There was no splash when we threw Takumi's body in there, was there? The moment we went into the misc and down the cliff, our bodies vanished from the world and reached a place where there was no return. I finally had no choice but to accept it. As someone who had taken in the flesh and blood of the Yamabito, Chiemi, I couldn't escape either. That was why I screamed stupidly, only managing to run a few steps before the sinister claws tore me apart. Damn it. Where had I gone wrong? Not getting in the feast! <laughs> oh, that was a pretty rough ending. Jesus Christ. Descending in. No! What? <laughs> Descending into the Saranaga? Not believing Chami when she told me? No. How was any of that changed anything? Everything was decided by then. Way fucking earlier than that. I already knew the answer. Shit. I really wish I'd been a part of Yazumizu and participated in the feast. Thank you. Maybe I could have gotten a different ending than this, 100%. See, but the thing is, it just seems too easy if you know the wolves. You still gotta convince people, I guess, but it just seems too easy. That was the last thing I thought. That was the last thought that went through my mind before all faded away. <laughs> and the end of the game. <laughs> Whew. Man, that was rough. I didn't expect it to be that rough. I knew we were going to die. I knew we were going to lose. I didn't expect Chiami to like melt into nothingness. Oh, God. That was sad. Whirls and claws. Contain key four, sink into Nirvana. The route unlocked by this key is represented by the same number on the scenario chart. I'm guessing we're going all the way to the beginning and getting to the feast. Sure. It's not like I don't know what to do. I don't know why you need hints in this game. The route that's really obvious. <laughs> but. It, but it's fun. Congratulations! Fuck you! Oh yeah, lovey-dovey atmosphere. No! It wasn't. Oh. Oh my god. Fun in the marshes with Chi? あ、めっちゃ正解だからな。より
It's even more chaotic? The only thing I, I just can't figure out why it would not be easy if they don't change who the killers are. At the very least, it's gonna take up a mystery. I mean, it, there, there could be twists and turns. You still gotta convince other people. I mean, but if he remembers, it's like, it just seems. It would take out the mystery. Hmm. And, like, I understand that towards the end of the game, but I don't think we're near the end of the game yet. I, I have a feeling this is just the first jump of many, right? So. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we are. Maybe we're, like, halfway through. I, I, I would be shocked. I would think we're less than a quarter of the way through. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe this is... I don't know. Whew. Die another hearty death next time. Okay. That at least makes it sound like there's more deaths coming. Whew. Alright, that was intense. Next time we're gonna fucking rate this ship here, so... Till next time.